In 1599, Thomas Platter, a Swiss writer and physician, traveled to Spain and wrote of his opinion of the country in his journal. He is very straightforward in his beliefs and doesn't hold back in what he perceives as positives and negatives of Spanish society. The country is more thinly inhabited and less fertile than France, and so quantities of wheat have to be brought from abroad to feed the people. Let us add, too, that the Spaniard prefers the lands to the plow and would rather find wealth in war than in the cultivation of the fields. The farmers and cultivators are mostly Frenchmen who, ashamed to work so lowly in their own country, where many of them once occupied honorable positions, have exiled themselves so they do not have to blush because they live by the work of their hands. As for the Spaniards, they are at once so proud and so avid that they disdain small wages and prefer to cross the seas in search of glory and fortune in the Indies. Men of the lowest origins have thus raised themselves to the highest ranks. As soon as they attain to riches, they dress in magnificent clothes and surround themselves with extraordinary luxury and give themselves the airs of a great lord, although their father may be no more than a poor laborer. In Barcelona, the wives of simple cobblers were pointed out to me, with whom the ladies of the nobility could scarcely compete. They suck pride in with their milk. They are the vainest nation I have ever seen. They have nothing but disdain for foreigners, and as they try to lord it everywhere, they are everywhere detested. The Spaniard is sad by nature, taciturn, uncommunicative, slow in his enterprise, and never takes a risk unless the profit is clear, always stiff and affected. He knows neither the gaiety nor the affability of the French. Otherwise sober, especially when it is he who has to pay, he does not drink pure wine, and accustoms himself as well as he may to a little salad or cardoons for his complete nourishment. But this does not prevent him from putting a partridge claw in his hat and playing negligently with a toothpick to give the impression that he has just come from a feast. Drunkards are never seen in the streets, for drunkenness is regarded as a disgrace. There are no courtesies for strangers, as there are in France. Indeed, the Spaniards show little courtesy among themselves, and a peasant would think twice before making way for a prince. On the other side of the metal, however, their word is sure. Away from home, they strive to maintain their pride, though it be to the death. No other nation so well endures thirst, hunger, or heat, and this is what makes them such good soldiers. Skillful in skirmishes, cautious in combat, agile in scaling walls, because of their slender stature, they are as prompt to attack as to retreat. But their infantry is superior to their cavalry, despite the fact that the latter have horses so fine and so fleet that they are called the sons of the wind. They also make incomparable seamen. In Spain, parliaments are replaced by chambers of justice, one in Castile, one in Granada, a third in Galicia, and a fourth in Navarre. Advocates are less numerous than in France, and less eloquent. Each province has its own customs, pragmaticas. Barcelona, in particular, enjoys extraordinary privileges and recognizes the king only as count, conditional leader. They are so intractable about this privilege that they would go over to the king of France rather than renounce their right. Further, as I found more than once watching their plays, Catalans and Castilians have little love for each other. The Catalans also have more prerogatives. They may wear large starched ruffs and long rapiers, whereas for others, ruffs must not be more than two fingers wide, without starch, and their rapiers must not be more than a certain measure. They are forbidden to walk at night more than four persons together. If there are only two of you, you must never let anyone pass between you. There are a thousand petty regulations of this sort that expose a stranger to considerable fines. A considerable advantage enjoyed by the Spaniards is that of the confraternity, or ermindad, a kind of league formed between towns which enables them at the first signal to put thousands of armed men into the field. It is especially useful for the pursuit of malefactors, few of whom remain unpunished. As soon as the criminal is caught by the ermindad, he is tied to a post and killed by arrows from bows. This association renders useful service in a country full of workless men and lazy and debauched soldiers. 